My name is Michael Strickland. I am here in Antarctica in the Neumeyer Channel where I'm on a 10-day expedition uh, photographing the landscape, the wildlife down here. Uh, I primarily shoot on film cameras. When I'm home, I'm shooting large format. Here I'm shooting medium format and a little bit of 35 millimeter. So I started shooting film because when I was shooting digital originally, I learned on digital, uh, which is still, I think, the best way to learn. Uh, I was doing a lot of sports and the landscapes I was shooting was all panorama. Uh, so I would go out into a, a scene, I would compose a panorama and I would stitch seven shots together. What was happening is anything that would be moving would be blurred and I couldn't stitch it together four or five years ago. With modern technology, it's a little bit better these days, but still, you know, it, with, with the time it would take for longer exposures to stitch across a scene, you would sometimes lose the shot. And I was becoming really frustrated and finally the nail in the coffin, I guess, was I was in San Francisco trying to get a shot of waves breaking over some boulders underneath the San Francisco Bay, the Bay Bridge. And I was very frustrated. I couldn't get it because the ocean was moving. And so I did a little research and I found the panorama camera that I have here with me. And I, it was film. So I thought, well, what the hell, I'll give it a shot and see what we get. Uh, the first probably 50 to 100 rolls that I shot were just completely useless. And you know, at that point I'd kind of thought that I was wasting my time. There was one cold winter morning uh, out in the prairie where I was shooting this barn, had a nice hoar frost over the scene, had a beautiful sunrise, and I finally got a good exposure on Velvia 50, which is a transparency film. And when I got the film back from the lab, on the light table, it was just glorious, and that's basically where the love began. <laughs> I, uh, from that point, I had sold all of my digital equipment, and I bought a 4x5 and completely just immersed myself in the world of film, specifically with color transparency film. I, I have a lab at home now that I can process and print. Uh, black and white mostly in the print lab and platinum palladium prints. Uh, but for my color work, there's really not a great process anymore for printing color transparency work in the darkroom. So I print digitally, but the digitizing process, I recently purchased a drum scanner, a Heidelberg Tango drum scanner, which is this big 550 pound, five foot tall behemoth uh, that sits in the corner of my studio where you have to mount film on this clear ac acrylic drum uh, use an oil film, like a, basically like a fluid mount process, um, and then you scan them at an incredibly high resolution. So my 6x7, for instance, I could probably make, I successfully have made 40 by 50 inch prints from that. 35 millimeters is a little bit tougher, it's much smaller. Uh, 8x10, it's about a 2.5 gig file that comes in just right from the scanner, and it's just absolutely massive and stunning. This is my Mamiya 72. It is a 6x7 rangefinder camera, so I actually don't see physically through the lens. You see through this little optical viewfinder here that has a patch that you, as you focus these lenses, the patch comes together. When the patch comes together, it's in focus. So this is my Linhoff 6, or Technorama 617S3. It shoots uh, 617, so 6 centimeters by 17 centimeters, uh, so about of a 1 by 3 ratio when you get back the, the film. It's about that big, so if you can imagine a transparency being about as big as this dark slide. When I'm photographing with this, I have no means of focusing it other than this scale focus here, so I just basically guess and stop down when I can. Uh, but I do have an optical viewfinder that goes on the top, so when I hold it up to my face, I can see kind of a relative composition. With that, I have a light meter. This is my spot meter. It's a one degree, so as I go, th I look through a scene, I can t dial in my settings and my ISO of my film, and it will spit out an exposure for me. Um, this is an essential tool. This, even though that this has a built-in light meter in the camera itself, this is much more accurate. And with transparency film, I have an exposure latitude of about five to seven stops of light, so I have to be very, very precise with my exposures. Um, this is my little 35 millimeter camera. It's a Nikon F5 with a Voigtlander 40 millimeter lens. Uh, it's just a short, normal lens, and uh, that's what I've been shooting primarily with my 35 millimeter. With film, one of the biggest advantages for me is the process. I mean, I come to Antarctica with the intent to make 
hopefully miraculous photographs and may come home after 3,000, 4,000, however far away I am, miles of traveling and come home with absolutely nothing. I could have a problem with the camera, I could have been metering everything wrong, could have ex exposing everything wrong, and I have no idea. Um, and prior to me starting to shoot film, I was very, an anxious, very much an anxious photographer. I would be running around like a chicken with my head cut off at a sunset or a sunrise, trying to get every composition that I could find. And working with film, you just physically can't do that, specifically with large format. With large format, you're, you're confined to a tripod. You are very, very restrictive on the uh, ability to focus in low light. And it's just, it's very difficult. So I learned to study light. I learned to compose thoughtfully and it has really improved my photography. So with digital photography, I, you know, teaching workshops for the last few years, I've, started, I've seen so many people have that same anxiety and have you know, come to a place like this and walk home with 100,000 images at some, you know, in some situations. And it, maybe 20 of them are meaningful at the end of the day. So I think that my biggest piece of advice for digital photographers is to slow down and think. Um, your, the, the digital camera is a crutch in some ways. It's a great learning tool, but I think photography is being lost a little bit with the digital camera. You have to understand light. You have to understand what your camera is doing and how to actually create a good photograph, a good technical photograph, without looking at the LCD screen as a crutch. So my best piece of advice is to slow down, to get away from the backside of the camera and look at what you're photographing and try to experience it.